what your book says, the process by which life has changed through time. What are we talking about? Evolution. It's called evolution. These are the remains or evidence of some organism that lived long ago. Fossils. Okay, and since we're talking about this, let me make a clarification. Your book doesn't really talk a whole lot about microevolution versus macroevolution, but now is a good time to, to kind of fit this in. Microevolution happens to be changes that occur within a given species, and we see that commonly. Mosquitoes change within a given species. Uh, we see it in viruses. You have to get a different virus shot, uh, flu vaccine this year than last year because the, the, the flu changed. That's microevolution, small scale. Macro, M-A-C-R-O, is what we think about when we think of Darwin's version of evolution. And, and I know I am about to oversimplify this, but we're talking about a bacterium to a tadpole to a fish, to a lizard, to a monkey, to a human. Of course, I know it's oversimplified, but that's kind of the, a scheme, something like that. That is macroevolution. And that is the challenge that evolutionists face, is to try to show transitions from one of those to the next. Microevolution is very common. And so when we, when we say the word evolution, it should not automatically inflame anybody even though it might because there are different kinds of evolution one of the big things that evolutionists look at in critters is whether they resemble each other structurally and that's called homology analogy is where two critters have a similar function like flight for instance a bird has feathers a bat has skin on its wings and a dragonfly has something that looks like plastic and they all accomplish one task flight but they're not considered to be structurally similar and so they're not by evolutionists considered to be connected in an evolutionary scheme let's talk about the the geologic timeline which it which is an evolutionary timeline <clears throat> what is the date for which earth was considered to have formed how many millions of years ago it's 4,600 million years ago okay but listen to me for just a second if you take 4,600 and you take three of those zeros and you put it into 4.6 then you get the billion number 4,600 million 10 to the sixth goes to 10 to the ninth when you move that decimal three places. So anytime you see the question, uh, when did earth form, you could say 4.6 billion, or you could say 4,600 million. It means the same thing. And I am not incredibly strong at math, so that sometimes, it's kind of helpful to have that explained sometimes. According to the geologic time scale, when were the oldest known fossils of prokaryotes or bacteria present. Everybody say 3,500 million years ago? 3,500 million years okay, ago. Okay, now there is a magic event that happened between 488 and 542 million years ago in which, listen to this, all major animal body plans appeared all at once, kind of in a really short period of time. It's kind of a mystery. What is this called? Something explosion. Cambrian explosion. Remember in Spanish or Latin, cambiar means to change. So if you really think about it, it means the, the change, the big thing. Here's something that I don't need to leave out because this is super important. Between 4,635 million years ago, there was something that I said that happened between those two. Do y'all remember what I said? life formed <laughs> and that is a big question mark and on our scale it's not even it's not even an acknowledgement so listen to me close the real deal in the scale is not when did a fish crawl onto land and get four legs and become a tetrapod that's not the amazing thing 
the amazing event is when did life form? How did that happen? And that is difficult. That is difficult. And there is a guy, uh, there is a guy by the name of Michael Bay, B-E-H-E. -E. He came up with this book. Uh, he's, he's about intelligent design. And, and when I say he came up with this book, he came up with this theory. And he called it the mousetrap theory. And he said that like a mousetrap, a cell can't function unless it has all of its parts. A mousetrap has a, a base. It has a spring. It has a lever. It has a food, something to attract the mouse. And if, if anything's absent, it may be difficult for that trap to function. And that was what, that was his argument against an, a cell that evolved to become functional because either it functions or it doesn't. It's kind of interesting. It has been a real thorn in the side of the evolutionist and you can look at how many people have written books and criticized him and argued against him and that will be your evidence that he has posed an interesting question. This happened uh, between 400 and, uh, 359.2 and 416 million years ago. What are we talking about? It's called the Devonian period. Did we highlight this already? I think so. Okay, we did. We didn't. We, none of us know it, know it though. We're all just doing the best we can. For this. <laughs> Hang in words. It, uh, according to your uh, your book, it says that the first insects and first amphibians appear. Uh, 199.6 to 251 million years ago is Triassic. Uh, your book says the first mammals appear. You'll get this one, I know you will. 145 to 199.6 million years ago, the age of the dinosaurs, what is that? Jurassic. Okay, bam. You got that? <laughs> <laughs> 65.5 to 145.5 million years ago, placental mammals appear. This is called Cretaceous. Cretaceous and uh, 0 0.01 to 1.8 million years ago. This is called the when modern humans appear. It's kind of a long word. Everybody say Pleistocene epic. Pleistocene. Pleistocene. Everybody say Pleistocene. Pleistocene. Could be one of those two. Please. I've always said Pleistocene. It, that's how it looks like it would be pronounced, but it might be Pleistocene. Anyhow, uh, let's talk about age of Homo sapiens, 0 0.01 million years ago to present, is called what? That's called the Holocene epoch. Okay, one of the things that I want to remind you of, though, is that all major animal body forms appeared in the Cambrian explosion. That is an important thing to know. And it did not, these, this appearance did not happen in a gradualistic model and the model is called punctuated equilibrium where you have relatively nothing in one strata and then all of a sudden everything appears out of relatively nothing. All right, let's continue on with our study. This is called the total disappearance of a species or a higher group. What am I talking about? Extinction. Extinction. This occurs when a large number of species disappear in a few million years or less. It's a mass extinction, very good. Okay, if homologous is when different animals have similar features, what do you call it when they don't really have similar structure but they do the same thing? It's called analogous. Analogous. Do you remember what I was trying to tell you in the picture of the ape skull versus the human skull? Where the spine where the spine the exits in upright bipedal creatures like us, our spinal cord exits from the bottom of our skull, whereas in monkeys uh, out the back, a little bit of a difficulty to kind of show the transition there. When we look at vertebrate embryos, what is kind of the outstanding feature that we see in the picture? The tail. The humans have a tail at one point in the development. This is called a hypothesis that talks about the number of amino acid changes between organisms, uh, which is in proportional to the length of time since two organisms separated from a common ancestor. 
called protein clock hypothesis. Okay, let's continue on. This is a group of interbreeding individuals of the same species. This is called population. Uh, inheritable traits that allow individuals of a population to survive and produce viable offspring are called what? Adaptation. This is a change in the proportion of different alleles possessed by a population. Your book says evolution. Okay, let's talk about random changes in the genetic composition of a population. What is this called? It's called genetic drift. And then let's go and talk about a couple of genetic drift models. One of them is the founder effect, and the other one is the bottleneck effect. The founder effect, that example was the one given for the founding of Martha, Martha's Vineyard uh, hundreds of years ago by several families. And after several generations, everyone had intermarried, and apparently it resulted in deafness in the first deaf school on the North American continent, because what happens is when close relatives interbreed, it magnifies the likelihood of those recessive alleles to pair up and to get the, the, the mutation. The bottleneck effect would be some kind of like catastrophic event that happens. And probably the one that I, I always, always try to tell this example is uh, I Am Legend with Will Smith. Kind of this apocalyptic end of the world scene where at the end there's only a few people left in this kind of stockade area to repopulate the planet. That would be bottleneck. And so that concludes our brief review of evolution.